Hi there, I'm just in the background kind of keeping an eye on things. So if you've been, those of you who've been here forever, my apologies, but for the rest of you, we would like to do a very quick um, summary of where you are from. So if I could ask you, please, once I just clear the answers here, to um, put in your place of origin, um, we can see how the demography of everybody is changing because we're having fewer from Australia, etc. now, although I see you've got Zealand and Australia there now still, um, but people are coming in now from the States and such like. So I'd be delighted if you could all pop your place of origin into this box. There's about 30 people. All right. So I think people are getting fed up with this idea just now, so I will not labor the point. Just a couple of seconds more. Especially if you're from somewhere unusual, right? <laughs> okay, I shall end that one just now. Okay, uh, another quick couple, please. And if you didn't manage to get that in time, feel free to pop it into the chat box. Um, second poll, where, what is your main occupation? I'll just clear the answers that are there already and reopen it again. If you'd be so kind to pop, oh gosh, some people are quick off the mark there. <laughs> um, pop your profession or role in there, if you would, that would be fabulous. Yes, I know. <laughs> That's our opening speaker who has been there, uh, here from just about the beginning, I think, Chris. If you were here then, but you've had some sleep in between. Um, anybody else going to pop in their role? Um, can you tell us what the other is? Who that other person is? It would be delightful to hear what the other is. Okay, I'm not going to labour the point. Final poll then. I'm going to open the last one, which says, where are you joining the, the IDM from? I'll just clear those answers and reopen the poll. And could you please pop in there where you are from or listening to this from? <coughs> ah, Chris, <laughs> you were the other. Fair enough. Okay, so just a couple of minutes. This one doesn't tell me how many people have answered, so I don't really know. And I don't want to hold back from solar, so I'm going to end the poll now. Fabulous. Okay, let's move on then. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you very much, Linda. Um, I'd like to introduce our speaker and say a few words about her. Um, we're delighted to have um, Olubalusa, I'm sure I won't pronounce this properly, Adegbenjo, who's, who's trained, who was trained as a midwife in Nigeria and works in Nigeria, uh, although currently um, she lives in uh, Montreal in Canada. The presentation um, is around um, African concerns. Maternal and child morbidity and mortality rate retain, remain a major global concern, especially in developing countries. Home delivery is one of the safe methods of delivery in the developed world, while it is one of the major causes of maternal and child morbidity and mortality rate in developing countries like Nigeria and Africa. Hence, there was a need to study factors affecting and influencing the attitude of pregnant women and mothers towards home delivery. The study was carried out among 200 pregnant women and mothers at Ili Ilfi in Osun State in Nigeria in West Africa. Semi-structured questionnaires were distributed and the results showed that the high cost of the hospital bills, unfriendly attitude of health workers, lack of access to the hospital during labour are the factors affecting pregnant women from going to the hospital for delivery. And the study showed the need for more effective community midwives to work among traditional birth attendants. I'd now like to hand over to our presenter. Thank you, Chris. With everyone. And I'll be presenting based on a study carried out in the fair western part of Nigeria and my, the topic is factors affecting the attitude of pregnant women and mothers towards home delivery. I realize that there are many women that will come to the hospital over the years with complications 
and this really brought up a concern within my heart that why with the hospitals that are we have hospitals tertiary the teaching hospital is there the state is there the local but the centers local centers are there but people will still come down with different complications and this took me down to really see why are people still going to the homes and in this concept home delivery to my concept here is the delivery of a child outside healthcare facility which includes mission houses homes traditional bath attendant the tbs and i know it will be a surprise to some developed world that home delivery is a planned work even they will plan it they prepare it and people always like even to deliver at home i mean at home even in developed world but we cannot encourage it even in developing country like our country and because it's one of the major cause of maternal and child death even in this developed and developed world and why home delivery is really discouraged due to the lack of facilities that are needed at home for the delivery and qualified workers are not many in fact they are not present no ready-made ambulance vehicles to transfer this client even to the hospitals and they come back with many complications as i mentioned here talking about postpartum hemorrhage due to laceration prolonged obstructed labor ruptured uterus eclampsia septicemia puperia sepsis fetal death and maternal death and after going through this prolonged labor at home you know both in mission homes traditional part attendant and other places where no qualified hands are present with good referral system it ended up increasing the mobility and the mortality rate even of the women and even both the children and I realized that maternal and child mobility and mortality rates remains a global concern, especially in this developing country. And according to the Minister of Health in Nigeria, it said 36,000 women die during pregnancy and childbirth, but each year in Nigeria, and 13% of global maternal death rate, and which is very, very, is not really encouraging. And that is why we have to really look at the reason for this study to really understand the factors that is affecting them that is influencing the attitude of these pregnant women and mothers even towards home delivery and the objective of this study is to examine the risk that is being involved as a result of mismanagement from home deliveries to identify the various complications that have resulted from home delivery to identify the factors influencing the pregnant mothers and their attitude towards this home delivery. You know, like many, maternal health has a high priority on the global agenda mentioned under the Millennium Development Goals 5, which aims at improving on maternal health. But many developed countries encourage home baths because they have this facility they have paramedics that are available in case of emergency they have ambulance but all these are not really made available even in the developing countries so this study was carried out among pregnant women and mothers in this town Ilefe, where we have many hospitals we have the teaching hospital where i worked obafemi awolo university teaching hospital we have the state hospital, which is the secondary, at the secondary level. We have local government, the health centers, they are there. We have good private admission hospitals, but despite that, people still deliver at home and we look at it that, oh, why all this? And they will come back with complications and two after distributing this questionnaire to ask the question to really explore 
why are these people really delivering at home and coming back even with complications you know this research was an inspirative one to really explore their the factors really affecting their attitude and i, I realized that with the results looking at the factors influencing their choice of home delivery the 69.1 percent of them agree that the time of labor affects them their choice of home delivery then long distance between the home and hospital 66.7 percent agreed that then high hospital bill which is 61.4 percent really agree that high hospital bill is really affecting it in family tradition 35 percent believe that that is their norms in the home that's the way they practice it or oh, you must not go and deliver outside you must deliver within the home then 39.1 percent believe that in their religion their faith does not allow you especially if they said oh we have to have the syrian section oh they will reject it and said their faith will not take it and at the end you will lose the mother or lose the child then 58 0.8% believe that ignorance is one of the cause. The lack of access to the hospital, 61% believe that. And 46.3% agree that unfriendly attitude of health workers make them to run away even from this own delivery. And during this study, I realized that majority of them have good antenatal clinic. They attend clinic good at another clinic very well but when it comes for them to come and deliver they won't come to the hospital but when it got complicated they will be rushed back and few will survive even the pain and i also look at the risk that are associated with this home delivery infection bleeding eclampsia tearing of wounds like those that will end up with uterine rupture, bladder rupture, vesicolo, um, VVF, vesicolo, vagina, fistula. Then the baby also, they are at risk. There are injuries even to this baby. Tetanus injury to the mother. The death of the mother, death of the baby. We have retain placenta and poor outcome even of delivery. And in implication of my findings, this study reveals that there are many well-informed, many of them, they are well-informed about this, about home deliveries and the dangers involved if care is not taken. But still, some will deliver at home against their wish, maybe because of the time of the delivery or not having access even to go to the hospital when they are in labor. This study also revealed that there is need for more effective community midwives who will not condemn the TBs but supervise and train them within the community because no matter how few will still prefer home delivery and in the, uh, the skilled professional also needs to be present even in order to recognize early the risk factor for prompt referral if need be but how many of them are we really having and also, many still believe in their traditional birth attendants, some elderly women. So, but we need to train them. We need to have the voluntary health workers. We need to train the community midwives who will work with this TPA and the voluntary health workers so that they'll be able to recognize the risk on time and be able to refer them even to the hospital. And looking at the study, I realized that home delivery can be encouraged as in developed world if the following provisions can be in place. If we have good health workers, like midwives, community midwives, if they can be trained, if we have more, and also if there are availability of necessary equipment like delivery kits if there can be good transportation like having ambulance 
then good referral system with this home delivery can be encouraged if not hospital delivery needs to be emphasized and if we have to do that you know many complain of the high hospital bill hospital bill must be avoidable affordable and health insurance system also must be make that will really make this health care accessible and affordable and also workers need to change their attitude and I, many really complained about this that most of the health workers the midwife they will shout on them and they will not really they don't feel comfortable but when they are at home they will feel with them they will feel their pain so health workers also need to change their attitude and also the government policy that will promote this patient worker relationship the law have to really be enforced so that people will really know that patients also have their rights so my recommendations importance of home delivery should be emphasized if all those things will not be in place that will really encourage even the hospital i mean the home delivery the medical services should be free and should be affordable then also the health workers attitude they need to be checked and necessary disciplinary action needs to be taken against any misbehavior and government policy also on health should facilitate provision of community midwives for this safe home delivery thank you thank you very much Priscilla In case there are any questions. Okay. Um, are there any questions for Brusola? Please um, either raise your hands or um, put the question in the chat box. We'll need the questions in the chat box anyway. And it looks like a couple of people are chatting for you, so there will be some questions. So Gloria asks, are hospitals ready if all women wanted to go to hospital for delivery? The question again, please. Um, uh, Gloria asks, are all the hospitals in Nigeria ready for all women to deliver in them? Yeah, many hospitals are available. If I doing this study, I went to some of the hospitals. They were empty, virtually empty, especially the state hospital. They were virtually empty. The staffs are not doing anything. Some of them are equipped, but some are not because of maybe government or mismanagement or lack of maintenance of the property. Okay, there are a couple more questions there that uh, you might be able to see there, uh, Buso. Um Do you have access to distance midwifery training? I presume by that means that um, distance training, perhaps online or something like that. Well, well, in Nigeria, I don't think so. We don't have access. But that they started this community midi free, but it was more in the northern parts of the country in order to encourage the community midwives. But there is no distance midi free training presently. Okay. Yeah, I saw that Gloria also was saying that why are the hospital empty? These are the reason that I'm talking about here. The people are talking about the high hospital bill, the unfriendly attitude of health workers. Also, even though some will still prefer to be at home, maybe because of their religion or the family practice or they want to pray. It's really those that are having the religion, they that believe in their religion that they don't want to go. So have you uncovered two main problems, which is, if I think I've understood you correctly, there are not enough uh, uh, midwife and, and related workers, community midwives and related birth attendants to help with home births, and you've got very poor hospital service for delivery as well so in fact it's very difficult for people whether they have home births or hospital deliveries is have i understood that correctly 
yeah if you have to look at this hospital deliveries at least hospital is still equipped you can imagine if the hospital i realize that some of these hospitals are not well equipped but if you have to compare the two if hospital is not well equipped can you now talk about a home unlike in developed world where they have everything made available you can even call the paramedics and they will come right away and deliver the baby if the hospital is partially equipped or not well equipped which will still be better or preferred than a, i mean to a home where nothing will be used even to save this both mother and child but home delivery will have been very good if we can have all those things in place okay thank you for that um Layla has raised her hand and i've i've given her the microphones i think she might have wanted to ask a question verbally Layla, you have the microphone um your microphone's enabled if you want to ask your question I quite agree with Elena that was talking about the report of disrespect and abuse in the hospital and I think that one also is under this unfriendly attitude of health workers also and which we need to, the policy, government have to really make this policy and our associations also need to enforce this, though people are getting to know their rights now. So because of that disrespect and abuse, many are running away from getting to the from coming to the hospital to deliver. You are saying do the majority of home deliveries go well? Well, some, but most women are dying even from this home delivery or coming with complications. Even so, though some will tell you I saw one woman that said he had all her babies at home and she's doing fine but the last one she had got complicated that the baby had tetanus maybe due to not using i mean using an hygienic equipment using something like sponsor sterilized scissors to cut the umbilical cord. So, but if you have well trained community midwives, like the presentation of Gloria that was well, if we can have more people to be trained, if we can have the community midwives, if they are well trained, definitely it will really help this and we can encourage home delivery. Okay, thank you for thank you for that answer, Bushola. Any more questions on Bushola's presentation? Wait a few minutes in case anyone has any more questions for you. Thank you. Oh, looks like Gloria has a question.
it's a good question from Gloria. Um, if you had the resources, would you advocate more community deliveries or for home births, or would you advocate that women should go to hospital if you resolve the problems in hospitals? Well, if we have good community, we have resources, both in terms of materials, personnel. Why home delivery, home baths is very good. I will advocate for home baths if we can have because it will it will be good. Everybody has their opinion, which has to be respected to be amidst the family. In fact, somebody was complaining that they will not, the hospital will not allow his relations to be with him, I mean with her. So definitely home birth should be, I will really advocate for it if we can have this community, I mean the resources made available in the community, but we don't have it. So before we we'll get to that point, and that's why I'm saying that we have to just encourage and emphasize hospital delivery. But as soon as we can get all this in place, fine, home birth should be encouraged because it will reduce the maternal and child morbidity and mortality rate. He said, do you know anything about how many of these women in your study have access to or receive penata? Who recommended? What? Oh, I realized that in the study, most of the women that I carried, I mean, that were in this study, they attended, they have good antenatal clinic. In fact, the WHO, the four prenatal checkup, we are not really doing. In fact, they come regularly, even more than four prenatal checkup. Most of them have more than that because some people, even the TBH, we ask them go to the hospital, go and get your injection, go and do this. You just come back home to deliver. So they go to the hospital to have, they have access to the hospital, either to the state, to the local, to the private hospitals or to the teaching hospital, they have access. They have good prenatal care, but they will still end up even in home delivery. You are welcome, Sook. Any more questions for Usola on a very interesting presentation? I think I was very fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. But, um, it was a very interesting subject. And we still have 10 or 15 minutes if people uh, have any more questions for you. On the other hand, if no one has, I'd I'm not going to tie you to the chair for the next 10 minutes. Yeah. Soup's typing again. And in case you have people to share their own experience about the, especially people in the develop, I mean developing countries, their experience, how their experience is like, apart from Nigeria. So we have people with coming to the hospitals, even with complications from home delivery. But we are experiencing that only in so comes to those of us who are is it possible to read it or access it? No problem. I think this will, uh, the slide will be made available or do you want to have the you can send your email or mail me if you need anything more on it. That's it. 
<coughs> From his way, I think the best chance for a woman to work out her life is to have a vagina to you. Yeah, the Gloria, I realize that many also have this fear of cesarean section, and that is why they are running away from the hospital. The fear of oh, I don't want to be sectioned. That is where the ignorance also comes in. You know, about a large percentage who are ignorant that oh, if you do cesarean section, you are going to die. So they run away from me. I lost a friend recently. In fact, he's a, she is a master degree holder, and she was asked to have this. I mean, to, that she will have cesarean section because she has CPD. But she rejected it and she said no, she will not. And she went home. She was trying to labor, praying and all the rest and at the end we lost her and we lost the baby it was very painful and they have told her he will have elective CS, but she said no she rejected it yeah concerning the cesarean sections in the with the hospital delivery i'm worried the reason is i realized and i think that's another topic entirely that many of the doctors are taking over the gynecology, they are taking over the midwife's job. I don't know, maybe that is out of context now. They are really taking it over before the midwife. There are some things that we were trained. We can still manage and use our techniques, our experience, even to manage. But before you know it, the doctor will just say, oh, especially the resident doctors, the next thing is cesarean section. So I'm worried about the increase of this Cesarean session with the hospital delivery, and that's why many also are running away. But for the learning, they believe that oh, it doesn't matter, they can go away with it. Well, Linda, are you saying that in the UK too, you have people delivering at home with complications? Well, we don't have people delivering at home with complications if we can help it. It's all about risk assessment and um, trying to encourage those with low risk or no you know low risk people to have babies at home whilst only those that need to go into hospital because we we well know that um women can go into hospital with absolutely nothing wrong with them and end up with cesarean sections purely because they have been interfered with and it's getting the balance right and i imagine that getting the balance right in um africa must be even harder because to me I would be less concerned, now I'm ignorant because I've never worked there, okay? I would be less concerned with getting skilled attendants to the birth of a woman at home than I would be about taking her into hospital where she's more likely to end up with a cesarean section anyway. So, you know, most women can give birth quite happily without any help. So, I'm a bit, maybe, maybe saying, being a bit naive really, but uh, that's my kind of feeling, you know? <laughs> no, that's, that's good. It's, a it's a different situation in your country than it is to mine. Yeah, yeah. Of, of and course. even in your country, easily you can call the paramedics that they will come immediately. Yes, but indeed. But in this situation, you can't have the access, even if the risk factor, you see a client with edema, and they will still be managing it. You, you see patients with previous scars. And these TBAs, they will still be managing it even in the in the home. And by the time they come back, it's complicated with ruptured uterus because of the previous scars. It's a very difficult thing getting things balanced. So do we have any further questions for Basola? It's a very interesting topic. Oh, I think Chris is back now anyway. That's that's fine. Sorry, Chris. Thank you, Gloria. No, that's okay. Thank you. You were doing well, Linda, so I didn't want to interrupt while you were in full flow. Well, that's all right. Especially yeah. as I especially as um 
I don't know the content, although I'm getting to learn more. I know, you're an honorary midwife, Chris. <laughs> Chris is not a <laughs> midwife or anything of a medical nature whatsoever. <laughs> So he does really well. I think he quite enjoys working with us midwives. To be honest. Yeah, he does. He does. It's true. <laughs> okay, any more questions for Busola? Okay. Well, perhaps uh, perhaps we'll end it and give people a chance to stretch their legs and so on. I really really interesting to hear stuff from the developing world because we so much of our attention especially in the developed world is on the developed world so it's it's really useful and timely I think to to be reminded that there's an awful lot of the, the human population doesn't live in the developed world so hearing the, the challenges and experiences from the developing world is really really valuable so thank you very much for your presentation let me just flick through to the end. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Photo. Great photo, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn off the thank recording you. now. Um, please, I know we keep saying this and we'll keep saying it until the end, but if you do have any photos of yourself or, and or your friends taking part in this year's conference, please do um, click away and send them in. Um, the address is admin at vidm.org and we'd love to see those photos. One of our fellow committee members will be is, is putting together a, a photo show that we'll show at the end of the conference. We've done this for the last couple of years. Uh, it's great fun and we'll make it available on YouTube as well. Um, recordings of the session will be posted so you'll see that on our web page and the Facebook page and again they, they'll also be available via our YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to download your certificate of attendance for your portfolio. Please also, please, please, please do fill out our online feedback survey and Linda's kindly posted the, uh, the link there. So please do that. That's the only way we can make what we hope is a good conference even better is by getting your feedback on what we can do. Um, also, for those of you who are students, in a few hours' time in session 21, so just over three hours' time, we'll have the third of our student cafes. I, I was at the second one and it was really, really interesting. Lots of brilliant conversations from student midwives. So if you are a student midwife and you can bear to take yourself away from the main conference for an hour, please go over to the student cafe. Um, Linda's just posted the link for you there. Um, and I think that's it. So thank you ever so much, everybody. Um, those of you who are, um, have got the real stamina are in for the next session. You're in for yet another treat. We've got a wonderful set of sessions again this year. So look forward to seeing you in a few minutes' time. And our next speaker will be Anna Lee Reed. Um, so uh, a great session to look forward to there. Okay, thanks, Chris. Um, if, has anybody got any other questions before I clear the chat box and prepare it for our next speaker? No. Shall we stop recording? Let's stop recording, shall we?